Um, so my name's Hayley and I'm going to be talking to you today about the Tough Trek rooftop tent. Um, when we were looking at buying a rooftop tent, um, we completed YouTube on the topic. We researched every brand, we watched every single video out there to decide whether roof tenting was really going to be the setup that was right for us as a family and also that the brand that we were buying um, was going to be the brand that stood up to the type of challenges that we were going to put the equipment through. And we really settled on Tough Trek as a brand after lots of lots of research, YouTube, Facebook groups, um, there's a couple of really good roof tent Facebook groups that we spent a lot of time kind of scouring the posts on there and asking lots of questions and that's how we arrived at this. But one thing I did notice is that when we were watching all the videos, a lot of the people who were creating videos were people who were using their tents a lot. They were either kind of living out of them or traveling across Europe or America and kind of packing them up and putting them away, um, sorry, putting them, opening them up and packing them away on a daily basis. So as roof tenters, you could kind of consider them to be the Olympians. And, you know, they really knew what they were doing. Their kind of pack up, open out and pack up process was really streamlined and they've got everything really kind of dialed down and they knew what they were doing that wasn't us, that's never going to be us, at least not for a couple of years yet. And um, we are the type of people who go camping occasionally and then a bit of time elapses between the next time that we go and we've forgotten all the kind of hints and tips that we picked up last time. Um, we've got a very young family, we've got a um, 10 month old baby and a three month, a three year old toddler. We've got a dog, um, you know, we, we've got a lot of baggage. <laughs> So when it comes to rooftop tenting, we're not the Olympians. Um, you need to go and watch the kind of van lifers or the um, the rooftop tenters who are traveling around the world um, for kind of the advice that they can give. But it's a little bit like training for an event. So if you're gonna train to do a 5K or a 10K run, um, the Olympians probably, they could give you some advice, but it might also be worth watching some of the videos of Susan or Trevor down the road who's done the couch to 5k and they've kind of shared with you some of the hints and tips that they've picked up as a normal person and um, kind of attempting to live that lifestyle. So that's what this is today. If you are looking for, if you are a kind of pro rooftop tenter, nothing that I say today is going to be helpful or beneficial to you. Go and watch a different video. Um, you might have a laugh watching me, that's maybe all I could bring to it. Um, but if you are somebody who is looking to buy a rooftop tent and you've never done it before, then this is an honest video. This is probably how quick it's going to take you um, or how long it's going to take you to realistically open the thing up and pack it away. I'm going to share with you some of the things that I really struggle with um, and some of the things that actually I found surprisingly easy. So just to start off with, if you are any taller than five, three and a half, and you are working on any vehicle that is lower than a roof and than a Land Rover Defender on 18 inch wheels, you are instantly going to find the whole open up and pack down process at least 60% easier than what I'm gonna find it today. I'm short and I've got a tall vehicle that instantly sets me at a disadvantage. It's very tricky kind of leaning, kind of reaching up onto the top and putting, packing some of the stuff away and clambering around on the vehicle when you're working at such a disadvantage being my height. Also just to say that I'm very recently postpartum um, after my second C-section, so my strength isn't, um, I'm not the most strongest person at the moment. Um, I'm definitely working on getting that fitness level back up. So um, those are just some of my excuses um, as to why um, I'm faffing about so much today. But what you can say is that I'm giving you an honest, um, an honest kind of set up and pack down time. So let's stop talking, let's get to it.
So I'm just on top of the roof now. I've taken off, off the straps that go over. They're just really easy. You saw me do them with the little cleats at the end. And then under here is where the zip is. One thing I will say is that the cover definitely gives with time. So the first time, um, I think when we were putting it away, we were like, oh my goodness, this is an absolute nightmare. But the more times we've done it, the easier it has become. And it definitely loosens off with time. Just got the Coast Guard going over the top of us. easy if you just lift up the edges. There we go. Straight to the end. And then that's it. And then just pull off the corners. Yeah, just pull off the corners. And then just let that fall down. And then this is your tent. So what I do is we, because we have got a Land Rover Defender, we have got the extension ladder on. Um, most people won't need that, but it just gives us an extra few inches. So I'm gonna clip this down. So you just extend the ladder and push it down until this one's gone in. This one could do it a little bit of a jiggle. There we go, that's gone into the hole now. So that is secured in place. So I'm gonna call and um, climb back down the ladder and then pull it open. So I've just moved the camera angle so that you can see what I'm doing here. So this is the front of the tent that kind of covers up the area that you climb in. And in the corner, there is two little sockets that the end of this pole goes into. And for a while, this really stopped me thinking that I could put the tent up because I thought that you had to clip them in when the ladder was when the pole was extended like that but I've actually committed a day a while back to figuring out how to do this and there is a much easier way of doing it um, that I can't believe I didn't but I can't believe I didn't find out sooner um, but sometimes you don't need your husband you need your husband to not be around so that you can figure things out for yourself. And that was definitely one of these cases. So I'm gonna try and show you the sockets now so that you can see what I'm talking about, but they slot in really easily when you do it the way that I do it. So this pole here for storage feeds under the mattress on the inside. So when you pull it out, you have this. And for a while, I tried to fit it like this by pulling the end out and then putting it in like that and what I found is that because obviously it gets tighter you could fit one end in but then you really struggled to get the other end in um, and for a while my lack of strength and to be honest with you my husband even admit, admitted that it took him all his strength to do um, it stopped me from wanting to go camping on my own or just to take one of the kids with me because I didn't think I could put the tent up on my own. But then the other week I found a way, so I'll show you that now. Fold it back. Like that. 
So there you go. That's how you open the tent up. You just slot the pole in each end. What I've noticed is that in the inside corners, there's two little Velcro straps that hold onto the bar. It's easier to slot in to the pole, the whole pole holes when those Velcro straps aren't done up. So whenever you're packing away, make sure that you undo those Velcro straps so that the pole can move around a bit and you can get it to the baggiest part of the tent in order to give you a little bit more flex to get the poles into those holes. And then once they're in place, then you can Velcro it up and just pull it tight. But all in all, it takes two minutes. It really isn't too long. So now let's have a look at the setup inside popping the windows open and how much space have we got in there. So what I find to be the easiest way to do the windows is to put it through the hole in the end and just kind of let that let it run through and um, don't kind of clip it in or expect it to clip in. Then slot it into the hole down here. Just fits into that hole quite loosely, but once there's tension under it, it's really tight. So just slot it in there. And then I put weight on this pole with one hand whilst holding it on the other end. And it just clips into place just with the pressure. And then the tension is what holds it in place. So you've got four of these in total. One, two, and then three, and then four. And then a huge big window here. Your entrance and then another great window here which means you can take advantage of the spectacular views that you've pulled up at so inside you will see this pole this is a guess this is a best guess but we have perceived it to fit like this. So it's got clips on the end. So you clip it on that side. Clip it on that side and then tighten it up. That's a guess. I'm hoping that's right. There was no instructions in the Trough Tech tent. So that is our view that it stops it from kind of um, folding back on itself. Although I perceive there to be no risk from that. It's not like elasticated or springed in any way. So you would have to kind of manually lift it up and push it over. Um, so if ever you're struggling to close the tent, it's because you've forgotten to put the, to take this down, which is one of the things that we realised um, last time we were, my husband was putting it away. So here, as you can see, there is plenty of space. So even when I'm laying down, we try and move the camera a bit. So even when I'm laying down, I have about another foot and a half of space on this side, Ooh, and probably about two feet of space on this side. It is massive. So this comfortably fits me, my husband, a three-year-old, 
a baby who was in kind of, kind of like a big sleepy head if you know what they are and a cocker spaniel dog <laughs> um so you are not short this is the 1.8 so this is the bigger kind of family sized version but you are not short of space up here and one thing i will say is if, if you've ever been pregnant you will know that every night sleep you have past about six months is terrible but i slept in this when i was kind of probably eight and a half months pregnant. It was a couple of weeks away from me going in to get it sliced out of me. And um, I had a really good night's sleep in this. Um, so before you rush out and buy a mattress topper or a self-inflated mattress or any of those other comfort increases whilst camping, try it because actually we found it to be a really comfortable mattress admittedly for this life stage that we are at at the moment we've got a three-year-old who doesn't like going to sleep whilst camping on their own so you've got to kind of be with them in the same kind of room and we obviously have a newborn baby um who's waking a lot in the night um we have found that a ground tent is a little bit easier for this moment in time but we can definitely see that that is a snapshot in time and actually um in the future looking forward to kind of the summers when we go traveling around europe this is where the roof tent will really come into its own and we're really excited about kind of the next year or so to come um, and how much use we're going to get out of it in terms of quality we cannot fault tough trek um all of their stuff is produced in south africa so it, it uses kind of really good quality canvas that is used to seeing some quite harsh um environments and um, harsh weather um but it's just it's brilliant and and the guys at tough trek as well um have been a delight to deal with um they have been um kind of really just really helpful and informative as we were talking through and asking lots of questions in the early days about how the setup works which way we'd need to position it on our defender um they were just full these guys aren't just people who sell camping stuff they camp you can tell that they've got a lot of experience under their belts and are more than happy to share that experience with you in order for you to decide um what is the best setup for you and where to place your money and um, we have also just got from them this weekend a 270 degree awning which I'm in love with um, but I am having some trouble packing it away at the moment again being five three and a half having a Land Rover Defender on 18 inch wheels I've set myself up for there's a few challenges there with regards to height I might just need to ca start carrying a step up around with me everywhere I go um, but I'm still kind of figuring out some hints and tricks on how to kind of make the packing away process um, easier but I will definitely do a video on that um, but so far first impressions are that it is great we've only had it out three times we got it last, this weekend so we got it three days ago we've had it out three times um, and yeah we're loving it so far so I'll definitely do a video on that but for the moment this is all I've got to say on the tent we are really enjoying it the quality is brilliant um, had no problems um, really looking forward to getting more use out of it um, but now for you to kind of see the pack away the pack away process is definitely a little bit longer than the unfolding process like everything with camping um, so I think the main kind of um, time consumers in the packing away process is um, tucking it into once it was folded over as a clam tucking it under and then zipping the cover on but you'll see me do that now now to pack away
sure. So there you go, all packed away. So is it a faff? Yeah, all camping's faff, of course it is. There's a little bit of exercise involved, the kind of getting the um, the tent to kind of, um, when it clam shuts, squidging it all in, getting that all in so you can get the cover on. It's a bit of work, but you have the freedom to go anywhere. You can pitch up anywhere you want. 
um, you don't need to fill the boot of your car with huge big tents. You can leave that space for paddle boards, surfboards, whatever it else it is that you, you take on your adventures. Um, and I just love the freedom that it offers. Um, I think that's the thing that really sold it to me. Um, so I love it. It's really great quality. Um, highly recommend um, the brand Tough Trek. Um, but there is some work involved. Opening it up, really easy. Closing it, there's a little bit of fiddling around, yeah? Um, so you've got to be prepared to kind of, you know, get hands on with it. Um, but the more times you do it, the easier it gets. So if you're watching this video after the first time you've been roof tent camping and you're like, oh my gosh, this is such a faff to put away. One thing I will say is that it definitely gets easier and it gets easier very quickly. So the materials do relax um, as they've been in the environment, the weather, um, the heat. Um, and they've been used and stretched a few times, which does make packing it away a lot easier. Um, but um, it's worth it. So this is a new YouTube channel for us. Um, do give us a follow. We're gonna be producing a lot more content ongoing as our kids kind of get more mobile and we get to kind of take them out more. So we are gonna be kind of showing you around all the kit that we've got to take you on adventures and, and just showing you some of the cool places we go as well. First, so we're gonna be creating a lot of cool content. So it's worth following along. And can I just say thank you to Tough Trek um, for um, just being such a great company that's full of great advice and wisdom um, and so easy to deal with. Um, and thank you to my kids who have just slept through the whole production of this video. Um, they never sleep when I need them to. So this is massive. Toddler and baby fast asleep in the car, out cold. Um, so yay to that. Um, anyway like and subscribe I think that's what you say at the end of these videos um but yeah more, more content coming thanks bye hi baby oh hello check out that columnimbus columnimbus cloud how beautiful it is. Stunning. So the columnimbus clouds go all the way through the different stratospheric levels. Beautiful cloud formation. And thunder over there. Awesome. Don't know if you can hear that. Don't know if you can hear that little squiggle. One of them's 